Hello to whoever may be watching this. Um, this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to make a button to open a screen GUI and to furthermore um, close the screen GUI inside the screen GUI. Alright, so let's get started. So first, um, I'm going to go to plugins. Click build rig. It, it'll be somewhere here. Your plugins menu won't look exactly like mine because I have a lot of different plugins that you may not have. So go to Rig Builder. This menu should pop up. You're going to want to click Block Rig or anything. Just make sure it. Just make sure the button is proportionate to the dummy. And uh, ignore these green uh, circles. Those are uh, part of one of my plugins. So you most likely will not have those circles. So then we're going to create our button. So what you're going to want to do is go to the Home tab on the top and click Part. Doesn't matter what shape it is, I'm just going to use the square because why not. Then we're going to use the move tool and uh, bring it up to the height of the dummy. Then use the scale tool to scale it to whatever position, whatever size we want. So I have it at this size. I'm going to change the color by just clicking on it and clicking color. I'm going to make it light blue. All right. Then we no longer need our dummy, so you can just click on it press backspace. Alright, so now we have our button. We're going to want to anchor it. because if And if we don't anchor it, it will fall to the ground. So, just go to the Home tab and click Anchor. Now, uh, make sure Explorer window and Properties window is open are open. Uh, so, in order to do that, it, uh, you're going to want to go to View, the View tab at the top, and click Explore and Properties. Usually, they're automatically on, but if they're not, make sure to click them. And uh, so once you have your Explorer open, go to Part. Uh, all objects are automatically named Part. So uh, yeah, so you're gonna wanna click on the part, then right click it, and go down to Rename, and type um, Button. Uh, no capital, all lowercase. B U T T O N. Then we're gonna press the plus to the right of Button. And then in the search ob object, uh, type click detector. Just search, just type click, and it'll pop up. So once click detector, click detector pops up, you're gonna want to click that. And once that's inserted, then uh, you're all set. Now we're gonna create a screen GUI. So in order to do that, you're gonna want to go to your explorers wi explorer window, go to start a GUI. Then click the plus, and click and search for a screen GUI. Now click it, and it should appear under here. Now, once you have this, you're going to want to click the plus to the right of screen GUI, and look up frame. Now, this is your frame. It is a child of the screen GUI. So what a child means is it is under this. And the screen GUI is a child of starter GUI. So the starter GUI is the parent of screen GUI. And screen GUI is the child of starter GUI. And screen GUI is the parent of uh, frame. And frame is the child of screen GUI. Hopefully that explained it well. Alright, so then we're going to want to create our uh, GUI. So... And once you insert it, you'll be able, you'll have all these um, squares on the corners to scale it around and just overall customize it. I'm just gonna put mine right in the middle, and um, I'm just gonna customize it a little to make it look nice. I'm gonna change the background color, which is in the properties window, to 30, 30, 30, and it is under background color three. You can make it whatever you want. This does not matter. Now we have some black, a black background, and uh, I don't really like this square. So what I'm going to do is just click on the plus to the right of the frame and click and look for UI corner. So once you have UI corner, and click it, and then it'll round out the corners to make it look nice. Then what you're going to want to do is create a text button. So click on the plus to the right of frame, search up text button and it should appear 
make sure it's button and not label alright so then we're gonna rename this to well first you're gonna right click it text button right here right click it then click rename you're gonna rename it to btnx so this means it's a button it's a button and it's an X and this button will make sure well when you click this button it will close the frame instead of having to go back and click this button so uh, let's scale this around let's make it like this and then uh, over here if you go on the properties window while you have button X selected you're gonna want to scroll down to text this text category and then go to text the text property of the text category then click on where it says button and then just type X uh, it doesn't matter what you type here I just type X because it's X then uh, I don't really like that there's a square so I'm just gonna add another UI corner so to the right of button X click the plus and uh, search for UI corner now it looks much better now I'm going to move this around a little, put it there, and uh, yeah, you can add whatever you want to this, it doesn't matter at all, really. Uh, so yeah, then uh, you're going to want to go to frame, select frame, and click the plus to the right of it, and look, search up local script, or you can just type local and it will pop up. So click local script, and you have your script here. So, um, let's get started. So, to begin, we're going to want to define our button, then our click detector. So, to define a button, you're going to type local buttons, we're just going to type btn uh, equals game dot workspace dot click detector. Wait. Game dot workspace dot button dot click detector. My mistake. So basically, what this means is, wait, never mind. No click detector because this is just our button. So what this means is, it's so local is locally defining our variable, and button is the name of the variable. So it's saying that the button variable is the game dot workspace dot button. So what game.workspace.button means is the entire game like everything goes into the workspace tab into the workspace tab then to the button so it's going from game to the workspace to the button so that's how our script knows that this is the button so now we're gonna go to the second line press enter and define our click detector so again local uh, I'm gonna name this CD short for click detector and then equals button dot click detector so again this cd is the name of our variable then it is the button dot click detector so it goes from here to click detector All right. and nickname and the name of the variable doesn't have to be the name of whatever you're defining like button does not have to be btn you can think of variables as sort of nicknames in, or shortened names to make it quicker to script so now that we have our button and click detector defined we're going to want to define our frame so again local frame equals script dot parent so this is a little different same thing though we have our variable name frame and we're going from the script right here up to the frame because the script is the child of the of the frame and the frame is the parent of local script so yeah so child parent parent child now that we have that defined we're going to want to write um frame dot visible equals false so we want to do this first because once you spawn in the game you want the frame to be invisible you don't want to see it because the only time you want to see it is when you click this button uh, alright so we have that down oh let me explain what this means so this means it's going into the frame 
which remember we defined frame right here, which is this, this right here, and it's going into the visible property, so it goes into the properties window, uh, looks for visible right here, and then uh, unchecks it. False means unchecked, true means checked, so true, false, true, false. We're going to want to keep it at true for now. All right. So now that we have this down, we're going to want to make our um, click detector clicked event. So to do that, we're going to want to do cd dot mouse click connect. And then uh, we have to make a name for our function. We haven't made our function yet, but we're going to make it now. So I will just say um, activate gy. All right. Um, it's underlined in blue because we do not have a function called activate GUI. So in order to do that, you're going to want to go above the event, so above this line. And if it is not above this line, then it will err because uh, this line of code does not know what the function is if it's stated after, which I'll explain after I create the function. So to make a function, I'm going to go on line 7. It doesn't matter what line it's on, just make sure it's before the event, as I said. And then, so type function, activate GUI. And then, uh, two parentheses. Then, um, I like to space it out like this. So here's our function here. There's no longer underlined in blue. And, uh, so if this, so since this is before, this line of code knows that, knows the function and knows what to do. But if it was after this line of code, then it wouldn't know what to do because it has never heard of activate GUI. So uh, inside the function, we're going to put in an if statement. Well, actually, first we need to create our uh, is the UI open boolean, which is either a true or false value. It's just like a variable, but true or false. So local um, open. Uh, equals false. We're going to start with false because the GUI isn't open. So right when the game starts, right when the player joins, um, this is going to be set to false because we already know that um, the uh, that the GUI is going to be invisible because we have this. But scripts execute so quickly that the player is not even going to see the um the GUI before yeah they're not even going to see the GUI before this line of code runs so yeah so local open equals false this just means uh, that this variable this is the name of the variable open and then false it can be true so I'm going to leave a comment and to make a comment you just uh, put two dashes and anything after the to the right of the two dashes uh, the script ignores. So, um, true equals uh, GUI is visible. So now we're going to put in an if statement. If open equals false, then should not put that there. Then uh, frame dot visible equals true. All right. So. Let's do this. Let's test it. So what should happen is that when I click on the button, the GUI will appear. Yep, there we go. Now, we could make it so when we click this button again, this blue button, it would disappear, but that would be inconvenient, if, especially if the GUI is in the middle of the screen. You'd have to move your camera around to reach it. So, in order, so now we have to make it so that whenever you click this button it closes the GUI. So we're going to click stop and uh, we are going to define our button X. So to do that same thing local button X equals frame dot button X. So basically what this means is button X is the name of the variable and then frame it's going from frame to button X. Alright, so that's that.
So um, I'm going to make another event. So button x dot mouse button one one click connect activate GUI. I'm just going to remove those so it just looks like this. And it's mouse button one click because this is a GUI element. This is a UI element element instead of a click detector. So similar but different. So um, then we are going to make sure that uh, the function also checks if the frame is open. And if it's open, it's going to close when it is called. So to show that it's open, we also need to modify the value of the boolean. And to do that, we're going to go down the line and type open equals true. So this is saying that the variable open is true. And remember, true equals GUI is visible. So we have that. Now, now we're going to write an else if to it. So else if. So basically what this means is else, like say this condition does not apply, it's going to go to this next if statement. So else if open is equal to true, then frame dot visible equals false. So, um, so else, if this condition is not true, then, uh, if open is equal to true, then make the frame invisible by doing frame.visible equals false. Then we're going to want to modify the boolean value again, so open equals false. There we go. And, um... Let's test this. So we're going to approach our button. And then uh, once we click this button, it should make the frame visible. And it works. Well, there you have it. Uh, that is the button to make a GUI appear. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something.